Romans chapter 6. We're going to speak on grace this evening. Uh, the grace of God is, uh, from what I read, is the most powerful thing in the book. It's the grace of God. But you'll see what <laughs> grace will do. We're taking. We still got to go through something, even though we have grace. Right. Chapter 6 of Romans says, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Verse 2 says, God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection." Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now if we, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more, death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died in the sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. You may be seated. We, uh, we're going to go ahead and continue reading here, but we'll uh, you be seated. We, but the Lord, we, I've been thinking about grace, and the uh, Lord's dealing with me on grace. How grace is a... Uh, a very powerful weapons that's being misused this day and time. We are uh, what they call, we heard a preacher, I believe it was Jason Hawkins here one time brought out, and he's preaching that we got people that's drunk on grace. Yeah. Yeah. That they, uh, they're they using it for a, a, a license, as we've heard before, to sin, to live any way they want, but grace is much more powerful than that. They're, they're putting a disgrace to grace when they live in sin and claim grace unto their life, that God is okay with the things that they're doing, that I know He's a forgiving God, He's a loving God, but the Bible teaches us right there that when we come to Christ, we're a new creature, that we also we should walk into a newness of life after we've been buried with Him in baptism and we're resurrected as He was in the power of the Father and we come and we become a new creature in Christ Jesus. Old things has passed away and behold, all things become new in our life. There's a difference there. But let me get done reading here. But It says, Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. That knocks out your doctrine. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield ye yourself unto God as those that are alive from the from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. So we've got a we've got an obedience unto righteousness is what we have when we're obedient to the word that we live unto righteousness. And when we died out from the sins, we are now we are under righteousness. We're to serve righteousness. So who we yield our members to, that's who we're the servants thereof. And who it is. And when we yield our members, and when we say grace has got it all covered. Listen, if you come under grace, to, I'm telling you, Jesus come to bring grace. I don't want to get ahead of myself. I really enjoy this when the Lord had me say, let me finish reading. It says, for sin shall not have dominion over you. For ye are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin? Because we are not under the law, but under grace, God forbid. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourself servant to, obey his servants, ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Being then made free 
Free from sin, you became the servants of righteousness. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members servants to uncleanliness and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield your members servants to righteousness unto holiness. For when ye you were servants of sin, you were free from righteousness. What fruit have ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. But as we was thinking on grace and we talking, we was thinking on it and so many times we, we hear it so much that grace, I know grace is, it is the most powerful thing that we have. But when, we, when, when you begin to think about it and you go and you, you say that Jesus, this is stuff that I know people think about because we've got good people that's dying and going to hell. And it's a thing that we want to say that everybody's saved, but everybody ain't saved, Brother Joey. Everybody ain't going to heaven. Everybody ain't going to make it that, but there's only one way. And I'm telling you, Noah, when it come down to Noah building the ark, what did God do? He found grace in the eyes of God. Why? Because he was a perfect and upright in his generation. He was a perfect man. He was already perfect, Sister Donna. He didn't, they wasn't that grace didn't make him this way. He was this way when grace, I'm telling you, when he God he found grace in the eyes of the Lord. There's something that happens when we come to Christ and we do these things. But Noah, when he found grace in the eyes of the Lord, Noah didn't stop what he was doing. See, we come now and we find this grace. The preacher will pat us on the back and say we're saved. Or some of us will even go as far as repenting, go down to the water hole in Jesus' name, the way the Bible says. And we say we're saved and we'll go on living any old life and be the sinner that we once was and walking right back into it because we read that we have grace and that we understand this grace. We even take Paul for an instance that, that, praise be to God, where he said that grace is sufficient unto him. See, grace is sufficient unto But what did Paul do? Paul continued in the ministry. Paul continued living a holy life. Paul continued to preach in the gospel. Paul continued walking in the way that God directed him to walk. Praise be to God. He didn't stop and lay back. He didn't do that. He continued a life of holiness, a life of righteousness, a holy life that was acceptable and pleasing in the eyes of God. It didn't matter about the bishop down the road or the deacon down the road. Paul lived a life according to the Word of God that he read and that was in the Old Testament at the time. The New Testament was being brought for us. Now listen. Grace. Now I looked this up in what man, what we've got from man. It says grace in Christian belief, the free and unmerited favor of God as manifested in the salvation of sinners and the bestowal of blessings. Now when you look, if we would take, if we would take and, and take grace and look at the, there's some synonyms for grace and one of them is favor. Because I got to looking and I said, Lord, I know you got Noah and you got Job. Job was a perfect and upright man. He was there and he was tested and he was tried for everything that he done. Everything, he lost all the things. He told the devil come to him there and he told him, he said, just touch the things that he has and he'll curse you to your face. Touch his skin. He said, skin for skin. Touch his bone. He said, he'll curse you to his face. And it's done but Job went through it all. He never left God. He was a perfect man. He was a perfect when he started. He was perfect when he ended because he found favor. He found grace in the eyes of God. It's grace that's going to get us there, praise be to God. After we come, I'm telling you, yeah, grace was shed abroad, and it was, and grace was here for all of us, but it's those that come the way of the cross. It was done for every man. But to be accepted by every man is what needs to happen. In that case, there's a lot that's going that I consider thieves and robbers up in heaven. Yeah. And I read there's no going to be no thieves and robbers up in heaven. Yes, if they ain't got on the wedding garment, 
that they're supposed to have on to you, they're going to be casted out. Yep. It's not, it's not going to be there. Sin's not going to be in this beautiful place. In God's big heaven, it's not going to be there. And I guarantee it, and I know it, praise be to God, that when people pass from this life undone and not ready, and not by the way the Bible says, they're not going to be there. That's just plain and simple. But we've taken, we've sugarcoated, and we've patted it down that every church in the country will not tell people that they need to be saved, that they need to come the way the Bible says it, to repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the Holy Ghost. It ain't in the churches no more. It's done. I'm telling you, people do not believe in these things. Everybody's gone. Yep. We'll go to the middle of the book and we'll get people saved. Yep. We'll go to the end of the book and we'll get people saved. Yep. We'll go to Acts if it's proper and we'll get people saved. We'll just get people saved in the situation that they're in. Why? To make us feel better. Amen. Amen. Yep. To make us feel better. Favor. Listen. Approval, support, or liking for someone or something. An act of kindness beyond what is due or usual. That is favor. That goes right along with grace. In the Bible, when you see grace and you see favor, they're falling right into the same category because Joseph found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Joseph found favor in everything that, but what was Joseph doing? He wasn't out making a ruckus with the boys in the field. He wasn't out of doing the wire and just any old thing and doing what they did. He was at the father's house. He was sent when the father said to send. And one time the father sent him out and they done away with him. They tried to do kill him and they couldn't kill him, praise be to God. But there was a purpose for him. Grace had a purpose for Joseph. And what did Grace do? Grace put him in a pit but grace brought him back out of the pit grace put him as a slave praise be to God grace took him to the dungeon but grace brought him back out of the dungeon grace put him over things what he did why because they would see he would get favor even over the people of the jail over the people of the house why because he had grace he found favor in the eyes of the Lord and therefore he had favor with man and God we have his grace that's about us. But we get this grace through my obedience unto righteousness and doing what's right. We'll go to the verses. It's not by works that any can make. I know it's not by our works. It's not by our works. But it took a work to get this grace. And it was the work that was done on Calvary. It was the walk that he walked through Pilate's Hall. It was the walk that he walked up the hill. It was the blood that was shed on Calvary. Don't you tell me it was just a free flow. I'm telling you, they're taking the blood of God today and they're shedding it abroad. Don't think that there was a sacrifice for it. He was the ultimate sacrifice for our sin. He was the Son of God, praise be the Lord. And there was a price paid that we could stand here today that we're not our own. We're not ever self no more. We've been paid for. We've been bought, praise be to God, by a price. And we must live as we've been paid for and by a price. Amen. Must live that same way. Yes. It'd be a whole lot easier to come to church if we figure that out. It'd be a whole lot easier to get down and pray when we figure that out. It'd be a whole lot easier to testify and sing that song. If we understand the price that was paid for this grace that we have that we abuse. That we abuse. You can't say you ain't done it. I've done it myself. Yeah. Back in the past, I've had you, I've walked into things and did things. And I've had to say, Lord, forgive me. Lord, forgive me of my sins. Lord, forgive me for what I've done. And these things have happened in my life. We abuse grace. And while we have a grace ought to be a fuel in our life that will take and push us to do better. We, I'm telling you, I'm not into this thing, praise be to God, to fight every day and to do these things. I'm telling you just to make it in the eyes of man. I've got favor with God. I've got eyes upon me, the all-seeing eyes. And I will praise be to God. That's who I'm worried about. That's who I want to please. It's Jesus. He's the one today that we must do and please Him. We must please Him. Thank you, Jesus. Find favor in Him. This. There's only one way. And when we come to this grace that was paid for on the cross, listen, grace is in the Bible all kinds of times. I didn't write down how many times. Old Testament and New Testament. 
But there's a grace that is here now that people's abusing. They're abusing. And it's up to us. There's even a spot in there where I've seen that, that we can distribute the grace. We distribute I believe there's a spot in there that I read that even grace should be upon our lips. Yeah. Grace ought to be in our feet. Grace ought to be in our hands. Why? Because we understand the grace that was shed for us. The price that was paid for this grace that was shed for us. That it run all down his face. That it run out of his hands. That it run down and out of his feet. It come out of these limbs, I'm telling you. It come out of these limbs, this grace did. What he took and laid. I've listened to people, they said, well, they didn't lay him down on a cross. That they had his hands above his head. But either way, my Jesus was crucified upon a cross as they called it back then. And they was nails put through his hands. They was nailed put through his feet. And I believe what the word said, that there was a spear put in his side. Praise yeah. be to God. And come forth blood and water. And I'll tell you, that's where the church come from today. It's Jesus Amen. that we must please in this grace. You, this grace that we have. Listen. Acts 2.38 How do we receive grace? How do we receive it? Well, that's a free gift, Rich. You can't say, how can we get it? How can we receive it? There is a receiving way to grace. They are. Now, the thief on the cross, that was beside of Jesus. You can say, well, he received grace that day. I don't know if he did or not. I just know what was said. He asked him to remember him when he came into them, his kingdom. He said, see, I... I can't even, let me go to it and read it. Lord Jesus. Remember me. Come into thy kingdom. Bless him, Lord. He didn't say today, you shall be with me in my kingdom. He said, shout. Thou be with me. As in a statement. I always took it as a statement. He didn't say that you would. You could take it any other way. But here's the thing about grace. Now we have a way to receive this grace that was paid for on that cross. And that way is the way that he told us to go. He said that this repentance and remission of sin would be preached at first in Jerusalem. In his name. That this would come, that the believers, all these signs would follow them that believe, that they cast out devils, that they lay hands upon the sick and they shall recover, that they could drink deadly poison would not hurt them, that they could take up serpents. These things would follow those that believe. It would be with them and it would follow them in the places that they went. All this was carried out and it was done. But here comes the day of Pentecost when Acts 2.38, that everybody kicks against. You want to receive grace? You want to receive grace in the eyes of God and have favor in the eyes of God? You've got to come the way that He asked you to come. Yeah. One way. There's not two or three ways. He said repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. One way to receive this grace. Does that make grace any less? Because we say, you need to go this way. No. Grace is just as powerful. Why? It's powerful to the one that received it. It's powerful to the one that received it. If, they, if we go with the way that they teach and they believe, then everybody's gone. Everybody's saved. It's done and over with. The blood was shed on the cross for the whole world and that everybody's going to heaven. You can read it. You can under, try to understand it that way. But when you come down to where he specifically says there is a church. There is a church that has made their self ready. Has been washed in the blood of the right land. That is a peculiar people. He asked us to come out of her my people. And touch not the unclean thing. They are a separate people. They're not just like everybody else. They ain't talking like everybody else. Dressing like everybody else. Doing the things of everybody else of the world. But they're a separate and they're a brought out people. That's different. They're not the same. You've got to 
do that. Let me go to Acts. Acts 15. I'm going to read most of that chapter. It says, And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, Except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved. When therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem and to the apostles and elders about this question. And being brought on their way by the church, they passed through uh, Phenonica and Samaria, declaring the conversation of the Gentiles. And they caused a great, great joy unto all the brothers. <coughs> and when they were come to Jerusalem, they were received of the church and of the apostles and the elders. And they declared all the things that God had done with them. But there rose up a certain of the sect of the Pharisees which believed, saying that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. And the apostles... And elders came together for to consider of this matter. And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, ye know how that a good while ago God made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. And God which knoweth the hearts. Now right there. You can stop right there and say, and believe. There at the end of that scripture, listen to this. It says, God made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the words of the gospel and believe. Now when he went to Cornelius' house, that I believe is in chapter 10, when he went to Cornelius' house, what happened? He preached. And he comes to, what did they do? They repented his whole house. What happened? They received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And what happened? They was baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. They was baptized in his name. That tells us when we come and we are known as a believer that we're going to come one way. And we also go to another place where there was a eunuch out in a desert place and there's a man called Philip that come out and come to his chariot. God sent him there and he come up to his chariot and he asked him, what does thou read? And do you understand what you read? He said, how can I son, unless some man teach me? I've got to be taught in this thing. And Philip took and started right there at Isaiah 53 and preached Jesus to this unit. And what happened when he got done preaching Jesus? He said, there is one. What hindered me to be baptized? He said, if you believe, glory, hallelujah, that Jesus is the Son of God. You praise me to God. You can go right on in the water, brother. And he took him down and he baptized him in the water. And we know that he is submerged because he come up out of the water. Yep. There's one way. One way that we're taught in the book to receive this grace. One way. The grace was there. But it needed to be received. This is a, a thing that we need to receive in our life. Is this grace. And there's only one way to receive this grace. But what's been on my mind. Is us as Christians. I'm talking about the true blues. Not to wonder. Not to wonder. Quit wondering. Cry if you have to. But quit wondering. There's so many going the other way. Quit wondering. There's so many are going with this and going with that. Quit wondering. Right. What does the Word say? Right. We must always reserve, go right back to Jesus and say, Lord, what do you say? That's what I like about Jesus. When I open the book every morning, He's the same. When I open it at night, He's the same. I can go to Him wanting to change things. He said, I can't change. I'm the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He's not going to change. Uh. It's always going to be the same. All to a thousand generations, He's God and He's not going to change. He ain't changing. He's going to stay the same. Grace is going to be received the same way. The only one way, Pastor. Amen. Yep. One way. If there's any other way, I tell you about it. But they ain't. Kids, there's one way. One way. Right. If you don't go by the way you've been taught, you won't go. That's right. 
You won't go. I don't care if you close loved ones, your friends. They say your pastor's wrong. They say your people's wrong. There's one way. You, you don't have to be confused in this hour that you're living in. You can believe in the one way. And His name is Jesus Christ. Yes. Many places that we can take you to in the Bible. Through the, that Jesus proves that He's the one way. They say just believe and call upon the name of the Lord and you shall be saved. Listen. Believing is not just words. Believing is action. Yes. Believing is a force. Believing is something that is done. Believing ain't something that is just said. Believing is something that done. Peter, James, and John, all the, they all, they believed. And what did they do? They went forth. They spread the gospel. Everybody they come in contact with that received this, I believe, was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of their sins. I believe that they repented. And they was baptized. I believe they did it in the order that they started in. They didn't stop. They didn't pat it. They didn't say, well, Lord, we need more saved. Can we change it just a little bit so they can come in? If we don't, Jesus, there's an army. Listen, they just don't change things in the army. Yeah, I know this one does. Now it does. They let everything in now. It don't matter. We used to, they had standards that they, if you had certain things wrong with you, you couldn't get in. There was one time I even tried through school because I had a small heart murmur. I couldn't go to the army, thank God. But I'm telling you, I didn't have, I could not do it. Why? I wasn't in perfect shape. I wasn't in the shape that they could use. But I'm telling you today, there's only one way God will accept you, and that's by the blood of Jesus Christ being applied to your life. And there's only one way to apply the blood of Jesus Christ on your life to have grace in His eyes. And that's through repentance and remission of sin in His name. One way. One way. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. How much more clear can we get? Nicodemus, he told Nicodemus, said, you must be born again of the Spirit and of the water. That's not even hardly mentioned anymore. Yeah, you must be born again. But they don't speak nothing hardly about the Spirit and the water anymore. We've still got to have the same word to be saved by. Right. The same word. And if the hearers don't hear how to be saved, how are they going to be saved? Amen. We've got to preach it and teach it the way it needs to be taught. That Jesus is the way. Pastor, you're preaching to the choir tonight. Listen, I don't want you wondering. That's right. I don't want you wondering. Has these good people going to hell, Pastor? If they don't go by the word, they're going to hell. Yep. If they don't go by the word and about the way that Jesus, Jesus made the way, if they don't go by that way, how can we say that they went? How can we say that they went? Whenever I preach funerals or whatever, I don't preach nobody either way. I try I just, Lord, that they're in the hands of a just God is usually yeah. what I say. Yeah. They're in the hands of a just God. Yeah. Now, if I know their life and I know the way they lived, I've witnessed things of their life and things. I was speaking those things, but let me tell you something. There's closets that we go in. There's places in our hearts that I can't get to that Jesus seen. If they ain't opened that closet door and said, Lord, come in and clean me out. Listen tonight. If you got a door that he that you ain't opened up yet and he ain't come in to your house, all of your house, not just part of it, not just this part of that, I'm talking about all of your house and your being. Praise be to God. I believe you'll miss out on that day. You've got to come holy. As Sister Donna says all the time, W-H-O-L-L-Y. Yeah. Not partly, but wholly unto God. That's how you can live a holy life. Not do it in vain. Not do it in contention. Do it in a way that you'll love and He'll love. You'll love and He'll love. Yeah. That way of life. Is it always going to be easy? Ask Joseph. Is it always going to be easy? Ask Paul. Is it always going to be easy? Ask Peter. Ask all of them, is this grace just a cake and a pie? No, it's not. This grace will take you places. It'll put you in dungeons. It'll put you in jail. It'll put you even in the fire. It'll put you in a den of lions, this grace will. But it's worth living for. It's worth fighting for. It's worth having. It's worth living a holy life and being separate from this world and doing the things that we need to do to please our God and be in His sight. I just want to be in His sight. I just want to be holy Amen. in His sight. I want Him to be able to look upon me. I don't want him to see sin. 
We can't continue in sin. We can't continue in sin. We've got to come out of sin. Got to come out of it. They ought to be a new creature. They ought to be a new creature. What's happening to the new creatures? Wait to know new creatures. When they come out, they got to be taught not to sin. When I got up from the altar of repentance for cussing so much, I didn't cuss no more. When I repented that night for adultery, I didn't commit adultery no more. Come on. Fornication, I didn't fornicate no more. Right. I didn't do these things for thieving, I didn't rob no more. Right. I didn't do what happened to the new creature. We got to teach them now not to do these things. Not to put their hand up. They will praise be to God. They ain't no new creature. The heavenly the conscience is not there in them no more. That's right. That's right. <coughs> so what do we say? Something ain't being born in them. I believe what was born in Mary, it was of that spirit. Yeah. I believe it was alive and it was a kicking. I believe it was a drawing from her. That's what, was, that's what should be born in people. They ought to be an automatic love born in them. They shouldn't have to be taught to love. They shouldn't have to be taught not to sin. They should not have to be taught not to cheat on their wife and to cheat on their husband. They ought to be, they, something should be born in them. That's right. Yeah. To be born again of the spirit of the water. We can dunk you 20 times. But where's it at? Where's it at? If the, I was reading today, if the branches of that vine, of that root, it's going to do what that root produces. Right. It's going to be drawn from that root. Amen. It ain't going to be no sin in you if you're in Jesus. That's right. Oh, but preacher, he just covered it all up for me with his grace and his blood. Let me tell you something. When he looks upon you, and you're in sin. He sees sin. Yep. He sees sin. He brought blood to forgive you of your sin. But not that you continue in sin. Not that you continue Amen. in it. Amen. If we know that it's wrong, we've got to get out of it. Right. We've got to quit doing it. We've got to back up and say, I can't do this no more. Amen. Right. It's not right. It's not modest. It's not. Praise be to God. It's not moral. We've got to get out of it. Can't live just any way we want to. We can't do it. Why? Because of grace. Because not because of pastor. Not because of mommy and daddy. Not because of uncle and aunt. Not because of good friends. It's because of grace. There was a price paid on Calvary for this grace. Yeah, it's a gift of God. But what was the gift? For God so loved the world that He gave. His only begotten Son. That whosoever should believe in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The Bible teaches us that He gave His only begotten. The only one that He can beget, He gave. That's right. So we could have His grace today. So we could have it. And live a life more abundant than Him. We're all living way above our means. The Lord has... We're abundantly blessed with Amen. the things we need and the things that we want. Instead of letting us drag us down, we should be able to praise more, shouldn't That's we? That's right. Amen. Mm -hmm. But we got the Saul spirit running around. When Saul got exalted, it was all Saul, 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 Saul. Go ahead and take your sheep. Take you some goats. Go ahead. Do that. They got caught. What they took. He said, what? What's going to find you out? Your sins. Going to find you out. What did Samuel hear? He heard him a bleating. He heard the sin. He heard the he heard what they wasn't supposed to do of bleeding. So you don't think that Jesus ain't a hearing your sins? Come that on. Jesus ain't a seeing your sins? Oh, they'll sin every day and say, Oh, the blood covered it up. The blood's over with. You're continuing sin. You don't continue in sin. What happened to Saul? Spirit was tucked from him. And there's an evil spirit from God. 
put up on them. From God. Yep. Why well, we got so many hateful Christians? Why well, we got so many hateful apostolics? Why well, we got so many hateful Pentecostals? Why well, we got so many hateful neighbors that go to church? Yeah. Why well, we got them? people's living in sin? The spirit of love has been drawn from them. I can't help but think if there's a spirit as strong as I know the Holy Ghost is in my life living in somebody and they're still doing the things they're doing and acting the way they act. They've got to be one miserable being. There is no way you could live day in, day out having the Holy Ghost and being in sin from the constant whipping we call it whippings from the Lord, but the constant <coughs> conviction, chastisement, whippings. And every time, knowing the scripture, he loves me. He chastens them that he loves. And continuing in sin and in sin. Yeah, there is a doctrine. The more you sin, the more grace they think is put out there for you. It makes God more and bigger. No. You know how God got big? He come down. He stepped off. Wrapped himself in flesh. He become a beggar. He become poor. That I could become rich today. Rich in money? No. Rich in the spirit. With the love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance is how I'm rich tonight. That's the fruit that's hanging on our trees. Should be on our trees. That we ought to live a holy, a sacred life to God. But right there it tells you, explains to you there, that they was taken, that when they believed, this is what happened. It says, And God which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, and giving them the Holy Ghost, even as He did unto us. And put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Now therefore why tempt ye God. To put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples. Which neither our fathers. Nor we are able to bear. But we believe that through the grace. Of our Lord Jesus Christ. We shall be saved. Even as they. Then all the multitude kept silence. And gave audience to Barnabas and Paul. Declaring what miracles and wonders. God had wrought among the Gentiles by them. <coughs> and after they had held their peace, James answered, saying, Men and brethren, hearken unto me. Simeon, that hath declared how God at the first did visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. Remember the old man stood and held Jesus and prophesied there? That was Simeon. And to this, and to this agree the words of the prophet as it is written. It agreed with the word. After this I will return and will build again the tabernacle of David, which is fallen down, and I will build again the ruins thereof, and I will set it up, that the residue of men might seek after the Lord. And all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called, saith the Lord, who doeth all these things. Known unto God are all his works from the beginning of the world. Wherefore my sentence is that we be troubled not that we trouble not them which from among the Gentiles are turned to God, but that we write unto them that be abstained from pollutions of idols and from fornication and from the things strangled and from blood. For Moses of old time had in every city them that preached him, being read in synagogues every Sabbath day, then pleased it the apostles and the elders who the whole church to send chosen men of their own company to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas. Namely Judas, surnamed Barsabas, and Silas, chief men among the brethren. And they wrote letters by them after this manner. The apostles and elders and brethren send greetings unto the brethren which are of the Gentiles in Antioch and Syria and Sicilia. 
For as much as we have heard that certain which went out from us have troubled you with words, subverting your soul, saying, Ye must be circumcised and keep the law, to whom we give no such commandment. See, here they was already trying to subvert the grace of God. Try to subvert it with the law. Bringing in the law that they must be circumcised to receive this. Listen. It says, It seemed good unto us being assembled with one accord to send chosen men unto you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, men that have hazarded their lives for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have sent therefore Judas and Silas who shall also tell you the same things by mouth. For it seemed good to the Holy Ghost and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things. See, that's the way it should be in our churches in the land. No matter who comes through, we should be hearing the same thing, being fed the same thing by the same Word of God. It shouldn't be five or six churches in one valley. It shouldn't be, I'll say that until the day I die. They shouldn't be five or six churches in one valley. We shouldn't be putting aside differences to come together because when we come together, we're still in difference. We're not one body don't come together in difference and leave out the door and talk about one another and do these things against one another. We are one body. We have one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. Bless him, Lord. So they were dismissed and came to Antioch. Is that 30 where I stopped? Let me see here. 29. 29. Okay. That they abstained from meats offered to idols. Listen to this. And from blood and from the things strangled and from fornication from which ye kept yourselves, ye shall do well, fare ye well. So when ye were dismissed, they came to Antioch, and when they had gathered the multitude together, they delivered the epistle, which when they had read, they rejoiced for the consolation, and Judas and Silas, being prophets, also themselves exhorted the brethren which many words and confirmed them. And after they had tarried there a space, they were let go in peace from the brethren unto the apostles. Now was standing in pleased Silas to abide there still. Paul and Barnabas continued to Antioch, teaching and preaching the word of the Lord with many others also. They all abstained from the same things. They abstained from the meats. They abstained from the idols. They abstained from the fornication. When we come unto God and His grace is upon us, we do not walk in the same way that we walk once again. We do not do that. That grace may abound. This is the, okay, Romans 3 and 21. It says, But now the righteousness of God Without the law is manifested, being witnesses by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. For all have sinned and have all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace. Listen, what you once was, you're now justified freely by his grace. What he shed upon us through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus to bring us back to God. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus whom God has set forth to be the propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. To declare, I say, at his time his righteousness that he might be just and the justifier of him that which believeth in Jesus. Where is the boasting then? It is, is excluded. By what law? Of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. He is the God of the Jews only. He is not also the Gentiles. Yes, of the Gentiles also. Seeing it is one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith and uncircumcision through faith. Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid, yea, we establish the law through Him. That's how we establish. We establish this law, Sister Donna. We don't do away with that. We established it. Jesus come and fulfilled it. We're the establishment of it. It's who we are. He's a good God. Forbearance is tolerance. 
2 Corinthians 8. Verse 7, it says, Therefore as ye abound in everything in faith and in utterance and knowledge and in diligence and in your love to us, seeing that ye abound in this grace also, I speak not by commandment but by occasion for the forwardnesses of others to prove the sincerity of your love. For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might become rich. 1 Peter 2. First Peter chapter 2, verse 15. For so is the will of God, that with well-doing you may put the silence to ignorance of foolish men, as free and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, but as the services of God. Honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, Honor the king. We don't use this for liberty. People's using grace for a liberty to sin, to live in ma maliciousness. That's evil. Live in evilness and do evil things and talk evil things and say evil things. Go to evil places. Listen, we got, we got things going on now that shouldn't be. People believe in stuff now that shouldn't be. We ought... How did, it, how did it get so far? So we could get to where we're at, I guess. Because it's all in there. It's all come to pass, but we've still got to stop where we're at. Yeah. I've got to preach it where I'm at and where I go to try to get things stopped there and what is being go what's going on and what's being done against the Word of God. That people's taking this grace and trodden it under their feet. The blood of God and trodden it under their feet. They're taking this. Is it less powerful because they don't know? It's still the same power to them that believe. It is. That preaching of the cross is the power of God to them that believe. Them that believe. It's this preaching right here that saves them that believe. It's for us. And to believe and continue and live and holy and accept and know it just by knowing that the grace is there. If we lived under a rock, would we still love it? If we didn't have a fine vehicle, if we didn't have a good job, would we still love him? No, just this grace that we have that's been shot that just it's been shot abroad in our hearts. Are we given this grace as we have it? Giving it to others. Brother Larry preached a good message this morning, really blessed and touched my heart. Yes. Giving it to others. It's just, it's this grace, the same grace Christ gave to us we're supposed to have toward others. They spit on him. They smote him. They talked about him. They're going, he told us they're going to do us the same way. But he said, give my grace. Right. Give my grace. Right. Give my grace to them. Also, they need somebody to love them. They need somebody to show them a light. Yeah. That, and that's where we go. Yeah. That's where we go. Everywhere we go. We must be alive. It's, uh, it's hard to love the enemy sometimes. But it ain't if you understand your grace. When we understand where our grace has come from, we, we, it's easier to love. It is. Why? Because He loved us. He first loved us. And we should be able to freely be able to give this without a contentious heart. Without it. Listen, it, I don't like doing it, but around the house, you know when you got a household and things is going and things is repeated, same stuff through your house. You've got trash. You've got dishes. You've got this laundry. You've got the floor being swept. You've got the yard being cleaned up. The yard mowed. You shouldn't have to ask. That's right. That's right. You shouldn't have to ask. That's right. If you just sit back and watch it pile up, you're one lazy Christian. Yep. Yep. One lazy Christian watching these things pile up in your life and not doing nothing about it. Amen. There's a content. That's what I'm trying to teach my children. They all know that the grass has got to be mowed. They all know that the dishes has got to be done. They all know, oh, that's your off job. No, listen, we're raising them, ain't we? That's right. They're going to have dishes one of these days? Yep. Amen. Yep. They're going to do it. 
while we preach the heart, what well, sin's going to come their way. There's going to be an opportunity for them to grab a hold of this sin and do something with it, if that's what they choose to do. And we preach the heart against it to stay out of that stuff. And that's the same way with any word. We shouldn't have to ask. Same way with, with any word. My job. There's certain things we do. If I sit back and let it get behind, that's my fault. Yep. That's my fault. Why? Because I know what I'm supposed to be doing. Why? Because that's the way it runs. We shouldn't let things in our life, don't let them pile up. Don't let stuff pile up. Don't take and get comfortable in grace and say, Lord, will just forgive me if I do it one more time. Huh? How many times has it come your way for that opportunity? Well, if I lie just this little time, yeah, it'll help my wallet. Lord, you know I need the money. Lord, you know I need it. And he'll we'll take the bait and go ahead and do what we need to do to satisfy the flesh and make everybody smile at home. Huh? Abuse them to grace. Taking the liberty, liberty, and using it for maliciousness. Yeah. Taking this thing and abusing it. How dare we, as Christians? It's, it's walk takes discipline. Amen. Lots of discipline. Lots of talking to yourself and reading the word. That's right. Listening, getting somewhere where it's quiet. I love quiet places. Do we get it very often? No, but. When I get it, I really, really enjoy it. God speaks to me about things when I'm in that quiet place. He tells me things and He reminds me of things. He's a reminding God. He reminded me of messages. He reminded me of the way I'm supposed to love one another. When I walk past somebody, maybe not give them the kind words that they deserved. He'll remind me when I get in that quiet place. Yeah. Sometimes our life is just so rustled and so speedy that we get so much piled up in a quick time. Lord God, no wonder we feel bad. We'll do, we'll just forward ahead. I'm guilty of it. Just forward ahead. Wide open. Yeah. And then we look, then when we get set still in that quiet place, what all everything that was going on. We let stuff pile up. Pile up. And didn't stop and take time. Didn't wasn't swift to hear that time and slow to speak. We just went ahead and flopped our jaws and didn't listen to a word they said and went on. Just like we didn't care. Yep. But if you got anything to say, you know, don't you understand that we have a this is a precious thing, this grace is. This is not nothing to be toyed with. This is not nothing to get comfortable in. Amen. Well, you mean not comfortable? I'm talking about not comfortable to sin. Yeah, I'm, I'm satisfied with what the Lord done in me. I'm satisfied on what He's still doing in me. I'm satisfied, just like the song was saying, about what He done on the cross. I'm satisfied that He come from I'm satisfied that He wrapped Himself in flesh and come down here to know me. I'm satisfied in all that. But I don't want to get comfortable. Comfortable and looking at through the, out the day and even thinking that I can commit a sin or that I can do my neighbor wrong or that I can go without loving my brother and lifting up my brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. I don't want to get in that comfort zone. Amen. I don't want I don't want to get in that comfort zone. That's the devil's playground. That's the, that's where the devil can take you and use you, and before long he's got you. Put things in your mind. Stop letting the devil play with your mind. Amen. Putting things in there. Just ain't so. Just ain't so. He knows that he knows what he knows what he can get you with in your situation. He knows where that weakness is inside of you. Yeah. How do you know, Pastor? I fight with it every day. Every day he comes with something. Something. Yeah. Who is it against the drunk down the road? No, it's against you. Yeah, come on. It's against you. Come on. It's against you. That's it's against you. It's against our brothers and sisters. He wants it all busted up. He don't want the love to abound within us anymore. That's right. He don't want this thing to happen anymore for us to finally to love thy neighbor as thyself. He don't want that. He wants it all tore up. Yeah. He wants them thoughts in order to be evil toward one another. Yeah. But you've got to 
Submit yourself unto God and resist the devil and he'll flee from you. He will. Will he stay gone? He will for a little while. He'll be back. But you got that one taken care of, see? That's the thing. You submit yourself unto God in that situation. The next one that comes, devil, I'm submitting myself back under God. Yep. Right there. I'm, I'm submitted to him. You got to flee again. Keep the old bird on the run. Keep him on the run in your life. Amen. Don't, don't let him get comfortable. Don't let him get comfortable. He's not, I've, won, I've went too far and I've won too many battles with Jesus to lay my armor down and say I can't do it no more. I'm going to go on with Jesus. I'm going to keep, I've made up my mind. I was going through this the other day. I said, Lord, I'm just going to keep loving. I'm going to keep being kind. I'm going to keep this joy and this peace and this gentleness. I want to keep gentleness in my life. I want to keep goodness in my life. And gentleness, that's the all. That ain't just the sun. That's the all. I want to keep this gentleness. I'm going to keep on going in this way, Lord. And I'm going to make it home. I'm going to make it to where you are, Lord. I'm going to be with you. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to see your beautiful face. Yeah, there's people that I want to see in heaven. There is. But the most important to me is Jesus. Mommy's never going to take the place of Jesus. Amen. Daddy's never going to take the place of Jesus. Amen. My wife ain't never going to take the place of Jesus. Amen. But I want to see Jesus. I want to, let's live holy and acceptable unto Him. Let's understand this grace. There was a price paid for this grace. It's not to be taken lightly. It's not to, it's not to be dealt with in a wrong way. Amen. Understand that this grace is paid for by the blood of Jesus Christ. It was. When we accepted Him as our personal Lord, 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 and Savior. But Lord, see a Lord, He's the owner. A Lord's the owner. He's the one that bought us. He's my Lord. He ain't just my Savior. He's just my Savior when I was lost. But I come and I made Him my Lord and my Savior. He's in control, Donna. It ain't me no more. It ain't Satan no more. It's the Lord's in control. Why? Because I've been bought with a price. I'm none of myself no more. I've been bought in Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. I had somebody tell me yesterday that he was their king. I said, you better make him your Lord. Better make You can take and throw out a king. Listen, you can throw out a king. You can throw out a president. You can throw out, but a Lord you can't. Lords have to die and be born again. Die. That's what Lords are. When they're Lords, they own you. See, there's Lords, they, they had servants that they owned. That's who they owned. And then you can read all this in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. they, they, that was their Lord. That was who they answered to. That's who they went to. That's who gave them the direction for the day. That's who gave them what they needed to do and how they needed to be was their Lord. And He's my Lord. And my Savior, I'm owned by Him. Yeah, I just thank your Lord, your friend. That's how you come. That's how you come. Husbands, He wants you. You're their friend. Even though Sarah, she recognized and she called Abraham Lord. We're their friend. Also, there's the there's the Lord. There's your friend. And every time of need, He's there. A Lord is there. A friend is there. He's gonna stick closer than a brother. He's gonna stick closer than Bobby Joe ever will to me. He's gonna stick closer than anybody than bro Joe and brother Joe is ever gonna stick to me. Jesus is gonna be there. He's gonna be there. And we got to remember, it's just grace that made it possible. We wouldn't be here today without this grace. This grace. And there's only one way to receive this grace. And I believe it for the rest of my life. And that's because Jesus showed it to me. He gave it to me. And I'm going to believe it. And I'm going to keep preaching it and go on with it. And keep teaching whoever comes here. Just keep teaching it and preaching it. That Jesus Christ is the only way. He is the only way. Yes, Not just calling upon Him when you're sinning. That's how we got it these days. Yep. But that's, listen, you're in sin. You're in sin. If you're sinning, you're a sinner. If you're a saint, you're staying out of sin. Amen. Become a saint in God. There's people scared to death to say that they're a saint. 
But I believe Jesus has the power to convert us, don't you? Yes, sir. From a sinner to a saint. I really do. I love him. I love each and every one of y'all. I keep going on. I, I love the Lord. I just want people not to be confused. Don't be confused. It's one way. That's what we got to stick with. And when we walk around, when we go, when we go to them, when we go look, and we see, there's still one way. There's still one way. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. In our hearts, lots of things comfort families. Lots of things. But why does it have to be a lie? That's right. And why do people have to go along with it? That's the thing. We can't go along with a lie. If it's if you're along with a lie, it's your lie too. That's right. It's your lie too. There's everything you can't amen. But by knowing the truth, we're made free. And we're made free of grief and pain. Listen, when we lay down these bodies in death, our life has just begun in one way or the other. Either we're going to die the second time or we're just going to die once and live forever. That's it. But when we lay down, that's what's going to matter. What we did and how we treated this grace. We're going to stand for how we treated this grace that was delivered unto us. We're going to stand for how we distributed this grace that was delivered unto us. How we handed it out. The same grace that we perceive. Don't you think Jesus be pleased if you if you give it out the same way he gave it? Yes. Lay down our life for our brother. I believe it's all in there. I believe it is, ain't it? It's all in there. Same grace. We're entitled to give it the same way he does. I love you and I thank you. Those everybody that come out. I know we're few in number. But I always said, Lord, I want to keep a burn. I don't care if there's two there. For one there. They got to make it to heaven. Amen. They got to go. They need a pastor. They need a teacher. They need a preacher. They need that. Even if it's just one. I want to always have a desire to be able to feed just one if that's all it is. Amen. We're, we're a few more than that to see. You. But I love you. I do. I really love you. Love you. And, uh, but Lord's good. Let's give the Lord a hand clap.